Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show here on STV2. The main talking points on tonight's programme. Rangers sack Pedro Cachina, Celtic hand out a lesson to Aberdeen, Mother will move up to third in the Scottish Premiership table. Yeah, just a few of the talking points tonight. Alan Ruff is alongside me, Peter Martin. The big news, Pedro Cachina has been sacked as Rangers boss. Hate to say I told you so, out by October. Yeah, I think it was uh, moved on a lot with Dave King being in the country. Obviously, he witnessed uh, the semi-final when he was there last night. I thought the, the crowd was decimated as well. You know, So you've got to take all these things into consideration. The supporters that have been a big part of the club for a long, long time uh, were beginning to fall away, and that's something that Rangers can't stand at this moment. So I think he had to go. Yep. Um, as far as Rangers are concerned, this was the statement they released regarding a parting company with uh, Pedro Cachina. Rangers Football Club announced today that Pedro Cachina has left the club. The decision to part company with Pedro was taken after careful consideration and the search for a new manager will begin immediately. Pedro was appointed March this year but results have been disappointing and not commensurate with the level of investment that was made available. Graham Murty, head development squad coach, will take charge of the first team in the interim, just as he did earlier this year. The priority is to appoint a new manager as quickly as possible, but the board will take as much time as is necessary to secure the right person capable of representing Rangers and providing the brand of football supporters rightly expect. We, the board... Uh, appreciate this is a difficult time for all Rangers supporters and we thank you for your patience and know Graham and the players will receive your full backing in the days ahead. We thank Pedro and his backroom staff for their efforts and commitment and wish them well for the future. So the backroom staff go as well. It's um, probably the little delay between last night and tonight uh, has been just working out severance package for everyone. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I think uh, obviously when the board uh, decided to have a meeting, it was on the cards. Uh, obviously, I, I don't think he's done enough in the last couple of months to convince anybody that he is the man for the future. Uh, I think we all thought right at the beginning the appointment was a bit strange, you know, that uh, the club besides a Rangers should be going for possibly somebody with a bit more experience, uh, somebody who knows what the club's all about. But they went down a, ro a road that I've, I've said on numerous occasions, I thought it was the same kind of road Ronnie, Ronnie Delia at Celtic. You know, I don't know why that appointment was made either. You know, another guy who didn't know exactly what the club was about and the expectations, and uh, it just hasn't worked for him at all. Yep, and uh, uh, of course, uh, after last night's 1-1 draw with Kilmarnock, um, Pedro Cachina uh, seemed to think he would still be there. No, I'm just worried about getting tomorrow in the morning, do my very best and keep looking forward as usual. Mm, I mean, short and sharp on that one, but uh, I think he probably knew in his heart of hearts it was coming. Um, of course, the record, uh, as far as Pedro was concerned, wasn't great. Uh, as you can see, 14 wins, 5 draws, 7 losses, uh, a win percentage of 53.8%, 26 games in charge. And uh, uh, I think that picture there rather mm -hmm. sums up the mood of the Rangers supporters as well. A number of Rangers people, um, fans, ex-players said to me they couldn't work out what what the style was of Rangers. I mean, you, you could understand Mark Warburton's style. It was pass, pass, pass from mm -hmm. the back and, you know, it, it, it became predictable without any real cutting edge. But I couldn't work out what was happening with Rangers. No, and I think he's the only guy who can answer that as well. I thought some of his signings were strange. Uh, obviously, Peña was the biggest disappointment in the lot. Uh, he came into the team, we, we got a chance to see him against Partick Thistle, he was obviously nowhere near the fitness expected of a, a player uh, of that high standing, but you're right, you know, they were relying on too many people, Alves at the back, Morales up front and, and nobody else, I mean Dorns will, will always give you a shift, he's an experienced player. But apart from that, I, I don't even think the, the rest of them were of the quality that uh, the Rangers supporters were expecting. Yeah, the other aspect of this that uh, I think annoyed a lot of people along the way uh, and the previous manager was guilty of it as well. He started making statements that were just so far wide of the mark. Um, I mean, he claimed he had the best squad in Scotland. I thought it was a, I thought it was a ridiculous thing to go down. You know, he say, you know, you have belief in your players, but he started making statements that I think he, people started to question. It. You know, re sensible Rangers fans could see through all that. Mm -hmm. 
No, I think I think one of the, the worst things of the lot were, were the press conferences. The, the, right from the very day when he came in there, there was somebody prompting him from behind. There was somebody telling him, you know, that he knew all the Hamilton Aki players, what uh, second names and everything. And that could have only been somebody who was sort of advising him from behind in it. And then in the latter stages, every time he went to a press conference, he was coming out with things that looked as if they were prompted from behind. So I don't think the press conference has done him any justice at all. Yeah, on the pitch, Ruffy, it didn't do him any justice either because, quite simply, uh, he lost the semi-final by two goals to nil to Celtic. <laughs> Could have lost it by a lot more. It was a poor showing. Then, going into a game at Ibrox, Rangers fans won't tolerate losing 5-1 to Celtic. Um, and, I, and I can look at losing to Aberdeen, losing to Hibernian, um, losing to the fourth best team in Luxembourg, Progress Niedercorn. Um, and of course then after that, he banishes Kenny Miller. Suddenly mm -hmm. you're starting to think, there's too many fires here. Yeah, but I think you missed out the biggest one in the lot was getting knocked out of Europe. Uh, I think that early on. I didn't. Progress Niedercorn. I thought, you, I thought you meant progress was needed. No, no. But no. <laughs> no, no, that but was no, their name. Yeah, no, I, I think that uh, that was the one. You know, that was the one where he's getting photographs taken in a hedge, talking to the supporters. You know, I think then the, the supporters will begin to say, what kind of manager have we got here? Uh, and then after that, you know, as I spoke about at the press conference, it just went reassuring at all, you know. But you're right, you've hit it on the head. I, I think the, the semi-final, the expectation of playing Motherwell in a semi-final, the expectation is you go into a final for the first time in a long time and again Celtic gives you a chance. But on this show we've just been talking about just game on game as a pressure game. And mm. you, as a manager of a football club, you okay there are pressure games that come along, but not every game. You know, and after the, the exit for Europe, that's what it was becoming. Is it going to be this game? Is it going to be the next one? You know, and unfortunately for him, two of them have came at once and that's why the decision's been made. Yeah, but, but I do think there's a, a, another aspect of this, apart from obviously his inability to get the squad together in such a way that they could deliver results. You can't lose to Motherwell in the semi-final in the manner they did. They were bullied out of the game. And then after that, you know, the, the press release was just... It just was unbecoming of of Rangers of old. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as that because there's no way you would have had that kind of press release from an Alex McLeish, a Walter Smith. It just wouldn't have happened. You know, at the end of the day, player picks up a two-game ban, and now we now we are aware that he's lost that appeal. So Bruno Alves will miss the two games, mm -hmm. but the whole the whole sideshow of that press uh, release was just it was a nonsense. Yeah, it certainly was. I think uh, when we showed it on the on the television last night, I think a lot of us were just dumbfounded, you know, to to answer a club like Rangers, you know, who who have gone down that road of everybody's against us, and we've been there before, you know, when uh, just that everything that came out, you know, was that uh, we don't get a rub of the green, we don't get this, we don't get that, and and it's it's horrible to see a big club like that, you know, coming out with that, and that's why I'm saying. That wasn't the manager. That was people from behind, you know, releasing yeah. that. You know, it'll be interesting to see if he comes out with that. But I'll be interesting to see if the supporters think Dave King's got a big part of this. We we'll saw what Peter Lawwell does at Celtic. In a club as big as Rangers and Celtic, you need a figurehead. You need a figurehead who's there, not day to day, but to be seen to be there and making decisions. And although they've put a new manager in, I don't think they've had a leader. Uh, to show them the way ahead. I'll tell you the biggest problem, you may get rid of Pedro Cachinha and the backroom team, suddenly you have a number of players in there, Ruffy. I do not know what they're going to do with them. Um, unless there's a, a change of attitude or suddenly another manager comes in and gets the best out of them. I'm looking at Peña, Cardozo, Alves, Dalcio, Candias, Herrera, Morelos. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not for a minute suggesting that just because they are foreign players or Portuguese or linked in any way to Pedro, that they should be dispatched. That's not what I'm suggesting. What I'm suggesting is I don't think any of those players have got, you know, major pass marks that would suggest to you, you know, they've got a long-term future either. No, again, and by the way, I could, inf I could include a few others who need to step up to the plate. I mean, Ryan Jack's been sent off four times in a count, you know, in, in 12 months. You know, he needs to have a look at how he plays football. But again, that's up to the manager. You know, if you get a discipline problem with a young player like that, who's obviously come into a, into a club, you know, where the pressures are a lot greater than when they, where they've been 
uh, where he's just come from. You know, so he's not been able to handle it. It's obvious the pressure's getting to him. Uh, so that's up to the manager to sort that out. But I agree with you, depending who the, the next manager who will come in, he'll want better players. Yeah, well, if Dave King's got a major say on this, I think he should make sure that the people who selected the last manager are not involved in this process. I think the director of football, Mark Allen, will have a more prominent role this time, or if not, mm -hmm. he should have. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. Dave King, right for the start, said, I'm not taking any part of this uh, selection basis. I've picked a committee to go and do it. He's ahead of the club. He has to have a say in who's coming into the club to lead the club forward. Yep, absolutely. Um, uh, coming up in the next part of the programme, we are going to look at the favourites for the job. We'll also look back at uh, Rangers and the 1-1 draw with Kilmarnock. It all looked good at one point. Uh, and then it all collapsed in the 95th minute. Um, that and the other goals from the Premiership coming up after this quick break. Welcome back to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show. In case you've just joined us and haven't heard the news, uh, Pedro Cachinha sacked as Rangers manager. Um, well, uh, he was up at the crack of dawn, six o'clock, in at the Rangers training centre uh, this morning. By the time he left after training, um, I think he may well have, uh, at this point, uh, suspected the writing was on the wall, but he was still adamant to uh, STB sports reporter Raman Bardwaj that he was going to be still in place as the manager. Pedro, are you still the manager of Rangers? Of course I still. Are you aware of a board meeting today? Pedro, are you aware there's a board meeting today at Ibrox? Yes, thank you very much. So you're still the manager? Yes, just let me... Yep, that could only have been on the way to Ibrox uh, when the decision was made. Uh, and now Rangers start the search for a new manager. Uh, this time around, uh, there are a few names that you'll be well aware of. Here's the favourites uh, for the job so far. Uh, Ruffy Alex McLeish, Graham Murty, who'll obviously be an interim charge again. Kenny Miller, Derek McInnes, Billy Davis, to <coughs> name but a few of them. I imagine there'll be you know, quite a few others that will be thrown into the mix as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think at this stage uh, you have to look for a manager who you think you're going to get at least three or four or five years out of. Uh, I know uh, we'll be shot down because of the money side of it, but I would have no hesitation in getting the money together and going for Derek McInnes. I think after last night's result, <coughs> we're Aberdeen and Celtic. I think Derek McInnes has to come to a stage where he says, how far can I take Aberdeen? I think the stalling on the stadium and the training ground is dragged on. Uh, I don't know how much that kind of money would be, but if Rangers are going to show any intent for the future, the long term in future, and still get through managers every one or two years, Derek McInnes is the man for me. Yep. Uh, I agree with you 100%, Rafi. I, I think you know they should have gone for him in the summer. Uh, didn't make that move. Uh, I think this will not please Aberdeen fans, no. but I think there's a ceiling point mm -hmm. when you get to Aberdeen, you know, uh, and I think Stuart Milne has tried and he's putting the case across that they need he's training facilities, they need a bigger uh, stadium. They want to try and take the club on to the next level. But I think Rangers are a bigger club than Aberdeen and... I think he would. I think he would transform it short term as yeah. well as uh, long term. Make a bigger fight of it. Yeah. No, I don't think you can hold in against Stuart Millen. I think he gave him. Uh, he allowed him to get out to England to to chat to the English team. Sunderland. Sunderland. Uh, obviously, Derek didn't like what he said, but I'm sure Stuart Millen convinced him. Uh, about the new stadium, about the new training ground, and that's why God, uh, sorry, Derek had signed a, a, a new contract or an extension to his contract. But this is a big deal for him. If, if Rangers really identify that he is the guy, I'm sure Aberdeen uh, should uh, allow him to speak to Rangers and, and say thanks very much for everything you've done. But Because I said, at some time in your career as a manager, you have to look and say, where, where am I going here? And as I've just said a couple of minutes ago, that result last night would, would be something that would 
just twig something that uh, maybe I need to move on. Yeah, I, I think they will make a, a real move for Derek McInnes. Let's just say they don't get him. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, a fallback position here on this would be Tommy Wright. Yeah, again, a lot of experience uh, and uh, we saw what he's done obviously up at St Johnson. Again, he'll be working on a bigger budget, you know, he'll be able to identify uh, bigger players. Uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't have a problem with that. I don't think the Rangers supporters would have a problem with that either. Yeah, um, I mean, there's names in the in the betting and the long list. It starts to get ridiculous once mm -hmm. you get to 25 to 1 onwards. Uh, even Frank De Boer's name is mentioned in there. Mm -hmm. He's got a Rangers association with the... Would they go out of left field? Because I think that mm -hmm. would be a left field shot. It would be a left field shot, but I think when you go for somebody like that, you're looking at what kind of players he would bring to the club. He's obviously got a lot of contacts, uh, foreign contracts as well. But again, you're talking about money. You know, how money, much money is he going to be given to his disposal to change the team round? Because obviously Rangers' expectations are being up there in second place. OK, um, what about the game last night? Well, this is what prompted the Rangers board uh, to act. It was, of course, Rangers 1, uh, Kilmarnock 1. And, Ruffy, uh, it all started well for Rangers. I mean, there's a, a good crowd there going there in expectation of Rangers, uh, you know, <clears throat> maintaining this uh, ability to try and stay hot on the heels of Aberdeen and Celtic. Mm -hmm. and, and a good goal to start with from Jason Holt. Yeah, Morales done well there, holding the ball up, looked for his options and he put it in the top of the net. This is a, a silly, silly uh, penalty given away here from obviously Jamie McDonald <coughs> and the centre half. But uh, obviously Jamie McDonald rectifies himself. It's a poor, poor penalty. I just think he took it. Well, he doesn't get a chance it. to take his five no, minutes. And yeah, this is, that's right. This, yeah. is, this is a ridiculous thing. Ryan Jack yeah. involved pushing. I mean, what is okay. he thinking pushing the player? And, and Kurt Broadfoot, and he gets the red. He's got no argument. Yeah, not even the pushing. He had a kick at him as well. But he has a kick at him right in front of the referee. And then he moves out the road and sort of hides behind Tavin. You're thinking the referee's not going to see him. But this was not only the save here for Jamie McDonald, but to get up and catch it, knowing what's at stake, that could have been defended by at least four Rangers players. None of them took any command of the situation at all. It comes off the box, the back there. And everybody leaves it. You know, Morales is there, experienced players, and they put it in the back of the net. So, yeah, we well, we'll said all along, you know, that uh, when you're at a team like Rangers, you know, and you're winning, everything's great. It's when you have to handle the pressure, you know, of, of trying to hold on to a game or see out a game. <coughs> that's when you need big time players. That's when you need players who have been through that scenario before of that kind of support behind you, knowing you have to win. You ask any old firm player, uh, whoever it is, they'll say, we can't draw or lose games. It's win, 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 win all the time. But when you have to handle the pressure of doing that week in, week out, when you've got players who are coming from other countries, do not know how to experience that situation and how to retrieve it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, uh, there's still, I, I still, the pertinent point here is, it's, it's much the same as Dundee United in the Championship, Ruffy. Another manager can come in now, they're not too mm -hmm. far off, mm -hmm. and make that challenge with Aberdeen. Yeah, you're right. You know, it even if it is the Aberdeen manager. <laughs> yeah, yes, right. But even it, I mean, it just depends how quickly they move. You know, have they? They've obviously had a board meeting. You don't sack a manager unless you know which way you're going to, go, what route you're going to go down, and yeah. who you're going to go for. So it just depends how quickly that uh, they move on it. Uh, now, as you're well aware, um, you know everybody's got an opinion on Rangers and, and the whole situation. Graham Souness was in town yesterday. Um, as you're well aware, your old teammate mm -hmm. at international level, he did say that he felt as if. Scottish football uh, could die if Rangers fail uh, to challenge Celtic for the title again. Um, I, I mean, he said Scottish football needs a strong Rangers uh, and Celtic uh, to create interest outside of Scotland. And and I just, I don't agree with him. Well, I, I don't care what England think of Scottish football. Well, I was almost, it's you almost, as, it, it's almost <laughs> as if Graham and so many other expats, yeah. um, you know, feel as if Scottish football needs to have some kind of pat in the back or mm -hmm. credibility with English football because they've got millions and we yeah, don't yeah. have. I mean, at the end of the day, I, I, I just felt as if it was, it was, um, that's just an old judge statement mm -hmm. on the basis that, quite simply, the, the suggestions of Armageddon before when Rangers were heading into administration and liquidation was everybody's going to die in, in the game, you know, other clubs will fold. 
Well, the short answer to that was they didn't. No. The, the, the thing about it is, yeah, we want Rangers and Celtic. Yeah, we want competitive games uh, throughout the season. And yeah, you need a, a strong Rangers. But ask Motherwell if you need a strong Rangers. Ask St Johnson if you need a, stro a strong Rangers. They're the ones that have capitalised on Rangers not being strong. They're in cup finals. Uh, they're winning cup finals, you know, so yeah, I, I agree with you 100%. It's up to Rangers to get back to where they were. And yes, we'll all enjoy when they've got quality players on their side uh, and, and games will be competitive. Do the board need to also change tact? Will, will another, will a stronger manager, will a Derek McInnes, you know, or even an Alex McLeish coming back or whoever they go for, will they be strong enough to say to them, look, this is the way we're going to conduct mm. this now. I, I think Pedro Cachinho was too easily led on a number of issues, as you mentioned before, with the backroom, um, <clears throat> whoever was writing their stuff. Um, is there a need for them to actually reassess the way they go about their business mm. now? Because this whole conspiracy theory and nonsense, it's all about getting good mm -hmm. players on the park who understand what the club's about, who understand what it's like yeah. to wear the Rangers jersey and go out there and play. Well, if it's Derek McInnes, he definitely knows what it's like uh, to play for Rangers. He definitely knows the, what kind of success you need. And, and he will bring in a certain player that will be different from the previous manager's players that he's brought in. You know, and uh, it'll be interesting to see, as we said earlier, how much kind of budget he's going to have to bring in. But there's lots of players out there. I mean, one is already at Aberdeen who's said he's wanting to leave and he's going there. So that's the kind of player that Rangers are obviously identifying. But uh, I, th I think it's all about the money because, uh, as we know, the, the supporters will now be demanding more than ever that they need to be on Celtic's shirt tail. Just out of curiosity, are we being unkind not to mention Graham Murty in this? I, I, I'm not so sure it would excite Rangers fans. No disrespect no. to the boy. No, no. I, I think he's done fantastically well the last time he came in. He probably will do again. Uh, it looks as if he's got uh, a full head of tactics in his brain, how to play games. We saw when he played against Celtic, he went out and set their stall out to get something out of the game, and they did. You know, no, I think they'll need somebody bigger than that. OK, you can give us your thoughts on that at Peter and Ruffy on Twitter, facebook.com forward slash Peter and Ruffy as well. We'll uh, read out some of your comments coming up in the next part of the programme. Uh, we'll uh, have a look at Aberdeen and Celtic head-to-head uh, -head at Pataudry, the top two. Uh, we will also uh, bring you the goal from that match up at Dens Park between uh, Dundee and Motherwell. It's all coming up. Yeah, welcome back to Peter and Ruffy's football show here on STV2. Obviously, Rangers dominate uh, the majority of the programme with the news that Pedro Cachinha has been sacked. Our bootroom guest, well worth waiting on uh, in this part of the programme, is former Rangers midfielder Alec Ray, who joins us now uh, by Skype. Alec, um, was it the right decision in the end? Yeah, Peter, I haven't seen Rangers the last couple of games. I think it's more to do with uh, some of the off-field instances as well, you know, uh, players being banished from the, the stadium and things. I think when you take all that into consideration and obviously the disappointment of Motherwell, followed by the 1-1 the Robert Kamalat last night, there, it was obviously uh, the decision that the board have come to. I've spoken to a number of players, Alec, who mentioned to me that they, they couldn't quite work out what... Pedro Cachinha's team was going to be or what style it was playing? Well, I, th I think it's fair to say that the actual squad of players, they pr pretty much picked themselves, Peter. Uh, obviously, Lee Wallace has been injured recently and uh, but the, the back four usually takes care of itself. Uh, the midfields, Dorans and Jack, Candias on one side, Windass. So in terms of the actual personnel, I think that more or less took care of itself. I think one of the things uh, in terms of the style of play in which he was trying to play it for me, it was just a little bit laboured at times. There was no intensity to the play. And uh, unfortunately, he couldn't get momentum, Pedro. And, um, you know, he hasn't even achieved three games back-to-back. -back. And for a club of Rangers' size, 
having been there seven or eight months, it was always going to be difficult for him. Uh, on the back of the poor couple of last results. Yeah, you mentioned uh, obviously the fact that he, he couldn't get the results on a consecutive basis. Uh, do you think he made bad signings as well? Was that a, a, another problem on the field? Well, listen, the thing, uh, having been in a same, similar position myself, Peter, it's extremely difficult to have a massive turnaround, say 10 players going out and then another dozen players coming in, trying to bed them in. But I think from the off, Peter, I think it was the progress neither corn was always going to be difficult to recover from. You know, because of the level of opponent and once you get knocked out of Europe, the pressure was always on. So unless Pedro managed to get a, a really concerted effort of wins, that would have bought him more time. But it's, just, it's always been one, a couple of games, and then a loss, a poor result. And it was always just a case of stuttering along. And I think some of the off-the-field antics as well in terms of you know, the, the the dogs barking and the caravan rolls on and the vampire sayings and, you know, some of the things that he was saying along the way wasn't helping his cause and it was almost as if he was feeding the media in that respect and that's great if you're getting results but unfortunately it wasn't so it was becoming more and more of an issue. Have you ever been in a Rangers team that was bullied? Oh, listen, Peter, one of the, the aspects in which I uh, I was talking last night, I was on the radio last night, and I was saying that, first and foremost, you have to roll up your sleeves. When you're at a club of Rangers stature, you're a scalp. Um, and so most teams come and they'll physically try and dominate you, they'll try and bully you, because they don't have the technical ability. And at the weekend against Motherwell, that was the case. And uh, that was a disappointing thing because of the magnitude going to a, a National Cup final against Celtic. And to lose in the manner in which they did, and the manager came out the following day and says, well, on the day he says it was um, his responsibility solely. And then the following day he was blaming the players. So on the back of that, you then get Lee, Wa Lee Wallace and Kenny Miller, uh, you know, not even attending the game. I think Nico Cranshaw wasn't there as well. And the dynamics were just starting to go really bad at that, that period in time. And the board have made this decision. So it's going to be a really important time for the board who they actually appoint. Who would you like to see as manager, just to finish? Listen, Peter, there's obviously going to be the usual suspects. It'll be Derek McInnes, it'll be Tommy Wright. Having worked with Big Alex uh, as a player and also as a coach, I know what he can bring to the table. This needs a steady hand, Peter. There's no two ways about it. OK. Um, I seem to have lost Alec there, but um, a, a steady hand is what he's talking about. Um, yeah. I think a steady hand means somebody who knows about <coughs> Rangers Football Club yeah. uh, and what the demands are from the supporters. Somebody who can be in touch with the supporters, give the supporters the kind of football that they want to see. Uh, but I think that's a whole package thing as well. You know, I think it's people behind the scenes have got to be on the same wavelength as the manager. I don't think the people behind the scenes were on the same wavelength as this manager because some of the stuff he was coming out with were just incredible for a club like Rangers. Yeah, OK. Um, you can give us your thoughts on that at Peter and Ruffy on Twitter. Facebook.com forward slash Peter and Ruffy. Thanks to Alec Ray for uh, becoming our uh, boot room guest there and a pertinent one at that. Lots of uh, former Rangers players will be looking on with great interest to see who's going to become the new manager. Well, um, usually if one half of Glasgow is successful, the other half uh, has a manager that's under pressure. That's been the case for Pedro Cachinha. Uh, but at the other end of the city, um, it seems to be all going according to plan. Everybody was licking their lips in anticipation of Aberdeen having a real go at Celtic at Pataudry. But in the end, it just didn't materialise. Celtic were quite simply awesome on the night and steamrolled them. Yeah, they certainly were. And Dembele gave them another dimension, a lot of strength there getting into the box. And it just, he's just aware that, that when he squares that ball across there, there are going to be Celtic players in the box. And lo and behold, it was Kieran Tierney. Here we see it again, you know, in the latter part of the, the, the pitch. You know, he had the ability to find anybody coming into the box there and it just seemed to be every time it came in it came, I mean it hits off his shin here I think but he'll take it you know but again he's in there he's causing trouble this is a good ball into the box as well I thought the goalkeeper could probably have came for that but again he's in the box he's scoring goals that's four uh, and you can see he, I don't know what it is but every time a Celtic player goes out for a wee while when they come back they look leaner they look sharper and again, you know, this was a penalty claim. I don't think so. You know, he's got nothing he can do about that. He's, he's just trying to clear the ball. He's hit it off his hand. No, not for me. Uh, I don't think it would have made any difference either. You know, but uh, 
again, you know, Celtic are just fine. They're just up the gear that we keep talking about. They've got, they can rotate players and every player that comes on does something special. Yeah, and with that in mind, Derek McInnes was the first to admit, Ravi, the golf is there. Um, but they, they taught them a lesson. Now, that's from the manager. That's not mm -hmm. anybody else's overview. That's mm -hmm. his look at it from the touchline, the quality they have in reserve. Yeah, I mean, it's a style of football. You know, when you're on a winning run like that, the confidence in the dressing room before the games must be fantastic. And then when you go onto the park, you know that uh, you've got quality players. They've all been playing with each other for a long, long time now. They all know the strengths and weaknesses of each other. And uh, that's where they're getting the benefit of it. And uh, last night, unfortunately for Aberdeen, they get caught on the end of an excellent performance. Yeah, here's what uh, the manager Brendan Rodgers made of the game. But listen, you, you have to get. I hear a lot of that at times up here. Everyone talks about the ease of which, uh, you know, you have to give credit to our players. You know, that they have the courage to, to go into positions that maybe other teams don't take the ball and accept the ball. And what that does is that can drag a team about. So, but I think when you play to that speed, and that quality, it's very hard sometimes to get there and, and that's why I always say you have control of the ball and can dominate the game and then you have opportunities to score. So I don't think it was necessarily what Aberdeen didn't do because Derek's done a brilliant job here. He's, he's got a team really motivated, he'll have had 10 days to prepare and do everything right to, to play. I think we played the system up to an hour that we wanted to play very, very well and, it's, and if you play it well it's very difficult to play against. From that we then swivel into a different shape and, and, and see out the game but I think tonight was about Celtic and Celtic's quality as opposed to maybe what uh, Aberdeen didn't do Yeah, already suggestions from many that that was a significant game that we'll see Celtic just march on to uh, another title of course uh, not only has he got players on the bench waiting to come on but the players that he picks to start the game uh, usually deliver the quality that he's looking for he was glowing in his praise of a couple of them when he got his goals, he's still working on his, his fitness, but I, I'm at the stage now where I look at him and Griff and I think, yeah, whatever I want to play in whichever game I want to play them in, they're, they're, they're ready. So Griff has run himself into the ground and been brilliant. Nice for him to have to come out and, um, like I say, have that sort of rest for 80-odd for minutes. And it's important we have so many big games that you can put another player in and... Uh, and, and he can contribute, and uh, and Mitchell was was outstanding tonight. Yeah, options everywhere. Options everywhere, apart from centre half, you know. But uh, that's no problem when because you've got the options in midfield and the options up front. They are the ones that are turning it on. You, you can see that a uh, big part of his game, as you touched on it there, is possession of the ball, controlling the game, and that's what they do. They just keep a hold of it. They, they score a goal, you know, they get possession of the ball, they take a wee breather, they pass the ball about, and then they gradually move up the park. And when you've got a player like Kieran Tierney, who's absolutely flying just now, uh, you're always going to get chances of goals. Yeah, uh, here's what Tierney made of his goal and the game. Um. I wouldn't say surprise. I said we've we've worked well. We've done. We've trained hard since pre-season. We've worked on the way we're playing, and that formation tonight worked for us. We adapted to it well. We passed the ball well. Everybody done the, uh, Everybody done their jobs. Pressed the game well as well. So it was a great performance, and that's what you want, and that's what we went out and done. And the golf between yourselves and everyone else was was highlighted again tonight. Do you see any? Team capable of laying a glove on you this season? Yeah, every game's hard. Um, there's no doubt about that. It's the way we play, the way the mentality of our players. Um, that's what maybe makes it look a bit easier than it is. But there's no easy games at all. We need to go and work hard and, and play, uh, fight for the right to play football. Yep, 61 undefeated. If they win at the weekend, suddenly, Ruffy, they've managed to break a 100-year-old record which Celtic hold already. Yeah, it's incredible. Uh, it doesn't matter. You know, you've got to play what's in front of you. We know that the, the Celtic players are top quality, but you've got to go out every week and have the motivation to keep that run run going. And unfortunately for everybody else, it's going to be a long season. Yeah, absolutely. Coming up after the break, uh, another team that are enjoying this season. Motherwell, they managed to get a good win up at Dens Park against Dundee. We'll see the goal that clinched it for them. Uh, and we've also got lots more. Uh, Dundee United are also looking for a manager.
Welcome back to Peter and Ruffy's football show. Alan Ruffy's alongside me, Peter Martin. Our bit room guest was uh, Alec Ray giving us his thoughts on the Rangers' situation, the search for a new manager. Who is it going to be? You can give us your thoughts and we will uh, debate it tomorrow as well on the programme on STV2 at half past seven. Hugh McDonald will be our bit room guest. Uh, and of course, it will rage on throughout the weekend. Graham Murty in interim charge as we speak. Uh, so... Uh, with that in mind, there was two games uh, that we've managed to see the goals. The third game was up at Dens Park. It was Dundee against Motherwell. And one goal in the end settled it. And Motherwell happy enough to get it. Yeah, and I was surprised that the uh, rotation system came in for Motherwell. Obviously a hard game uh, the weekend there. And uh, they've given three or four players a chance to go in. And every one of them uh, stepped up to the mark. Uh, good Quick feet there for Tanner, you know, just the outside of the foot into the top the top corner. I think Neil McCann can believe the defending, but they had chances uh, in the game. There's no doubt about that. I don't know if this is. I should. I think that should have been a goal. You know, I think that's not even a push. It's just a sort of a brush against the centre half, and you can see Neil McCann's reaction from that. You know, I don't think there's a push there at all. It's uh, just part and parcel of the game. Good header, and uh, I think he will feel a bit aggrieved about that. Uh, decision. Uh, I'm sorry, you can understand why managers lose the plot at the yeah. sideline. If, if that's a free kick, I mean, yeah. Neil McCann said if that's a free kick, we'll, we'll be stopping the game every two mm -hmm. seconds. That's ridiculous. Yeah, it is ridiculous. I mean, we've went from one, one extreme to the other. We talked about the game being too physical and uh, it's not even physical at all. You know, and uh, yeah. I, know I think uh, Dundee were unlucky with that one. Yeah, do you expect a full statement from Dundee, Ruffy? No. <laughs> <laughs> <Don't think so. laughs> Just, just the game's not physical enough. <laughs> just, just thought I'd check that with you. Um, OK, listen, uh, I mean, uh, if you're talking about a club where everything in the garden is rosy at the moment, I mean, out with Celtic who are, you know, just bludgeoning their way to another title. I mean, Motherwell, it's incredible. Uh, you know, what a week they've had. And now, leapfrogging Rangers, uh, as you can see... Uh, from the, the Premier League table. They're third in the table. I mean, it's fantastic viewing for, for Motherwell fans. Yeah, well, it doesn't matter what club you're at, Peter. If you go on a winning run, uh, sometimes it's very, very difficult to, to stop being on it. You know, and you saw decisions like that uh, last night. That's what happens. You get a rub of the green. You know, the ball goes in the net rather than over the top. And, uh, and, and I was, as I said earlier there, I surprised the amount of players that uh, they gave a, a shout to last night. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I mean, you look at that table, he, he blows out of the water, Stephen Robinson, mm -hmm. this whole thing about players need to come in and bed themselves in. Mm -hmm. You know, he's managed to get a system, they know what they're doing, mm -hmm. every player has a role to play when he comes into the team. 17 mm -hmm. players they brought in mm -hmm. when, you know, a, a similar number going out the door, and look where they are. Yeah, and it's the same, not the same as Celtic, but the same kind of you know, formation, you know, if you're a player who's been brought in and you haven't been given a chance to show what you can do and all of a sudden the manager said, right, uh, Louis Moult, you have a rest tonight, we're going to play Tanner and you get the chance to come in and, and you just want to impress the manager and you, the manager gets the benefit of it, the team gets the benefit of it and that's what happened last night. Yeah, the other point here is if, if Stephen Robinson were to be denied a place at the, the League Cup final in the dugout, that would mm. be poor. Yeah, I think he has to tread very carefully in that one because I don't think he can be setting uh, special circumstances for anybody. So if he if he does drag that out and appeals it in the fifth, he's gonna he's gonna get two games because he's got previous. Yeah. So he's gonna miss it. So that's just me. I I would just accept it. Uh, what you, and miss the cup final? No, no. I would accept the ban and take it now. You know, if yeah. it's if it's leading up to that. I mean, I don't. I mean, does it include the the final? Yeah. If he if he accepts the two. Yeah. It would be, I thought it would just be two games. Yeah. The next two games. Um, it's sent to the stand. Um, and he's been charged with misconduct. So on November the 9th uh, will determine whether he's going to be suspended for the final mm. on November 26th. Yeah, but if he accepts it now. Does he serve it now? No. As Coutinho no, did the other night? No, he serves night. it in the cup final. That's what he's waiting on. So, oh, well, it's worthwhile defending then. Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. I think so. I mean, mm -hmm. I wouldn't like to see him miss out on it. Um, so, uh, it depends on what kind of case he puts. Sometimes you go up to uh, hear these cases, you put a really good case together and you still mm -hmm. take, a, <laughs> you still take a, a, the belt, as they say. Um, mm -hmm. Here's hoping he's, he's able to take his place and enjoy the occasion because... 
sometimes it's all too rare, Rafi. Now, mm -hmm. with the, 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 the cup final in mind, um, Motherwell uh, obviously uh, will get their share, 13,500 tickets. I think it's mm -hmm. a sensible approach the two clubs have made on this. They'll get 13,500. There's the possibility of an extra 1,500 if they're really shifting tickets, Mother. I, I think there's every possibility they'll shift the other 1,500 as well because everybody wants to make it a family day. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised that uh, it isn't more than 13,000. Uh, I, I thought, Mother, well, I think we were at a European game uh, and I think there was nine and a half, ten at one of the, the earlier European games that we're in. And, and as you said there, everybody wants to go to a cup final. But I think Motherwell have been very sensible about the whole thing. They've ov they obviously know the fan base that they can tap into and they're acting responsibly about the whole thing. And, and let's go the opposite way. If they've got 13 and a half and they want another thousand or two, why not give them it? Yeah, uh, I'm looking at the prices, Ruffy. 30, 35, 40 pounds uh, adults. That's mm -hmm. the, the three variations for the Motherwell fans. Uh, and concessions fifteen pounds. That are you happy with that? Yeah, I think it's a final. You know, it's a yeah. it's a it's a big big day out for everybody, and uh, obviously somebody's got to make money out of it. And uh, does it not go back to the clubs anyway? Yeah. What's the most you've ever paid for a ticket for anything? Um, <laughs> uh, Four hundred euros. Oh, of course, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just, I just remember that one. Yeah, a Champions League final. A Champions League final yeah. on the Bernabeu. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, was it worth it? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. I thought, I thought you might. I thought you might say, yeah, it was never to be forgotten. But at that price, I know what you're like. Um, okay. Uh, if we're talking about. Um, clubs looking for managers. Dundee United are about to start their search. No surprise. You mentioned it the other day that again, it's going to be a similar situation. You're sifting through 50 applicants plus. Mm -hmm. Well, from the outside looking in, you know, the, the two obvious candidates, as I keep repeating myself, two ex-Dundee United players, two guys who have been at a club with success, are winning trophies, taking the team away from relegation and they're sacked, you know, for whatever reason. And, and if Dundee United don't see that these two candidates are as good as anybody that's there, then uh, I think they're, they're on a hiding to nothing. Yeah, do you think Jim McIntyre's red hot is the favourite? Yeah, yeah for... I, think, I think they do. I think Dundee United, as we all know, are a big, big club. Not at this precise moment, they aren't. But if they were back in the Premiership, obviously with a bigger revenue, that they've certainly got a fan base that uh, can grow and grow. And, and I think Jim would look at that, you know, and think of the Dundee United of the European stuff and all that. But again, it's all about finance, so he has to give, he has to be given the assurances that uh, he's got to have money to play with. Yeah, OK. A couple of things before we finish, Ruffy. Um, blow for your side. Stuart Bannigan out for a month again. Looks as if he's going to have another little uh, um, bit of surgery. Yeah, it's horrible, you know, horrible uh, for a player to be out for so long, you know, and we all know the circumstances that he was going up to Dundee, uh, Aberdeen. Uh, to talk about a contract before he got that uh, injury, but oh, credit to Patrick Thistle who stood by him, you know, right through all his injury and uh, got him back on board again. And it's horrible that something like let's hope it's not the same thing and that he's not out as long as what he was the last time. Yeah, okay. Um, Claude Puel talking about, I've, I've never, I don't think, and I, I might be wrong here, but is this the season where quite simply we are witnessing? the most chat on this programme about managers mm -hmm. in and out. Uh, it's incredible. Claude Puel is the new Leicester City boss. Mm -hmm. Now, as you know, I've, I've got a clouded view on Leicester mm -hmm. City and their skullduggery. Yeah, well, obviously they've identified, you know, that uh, he, he's got something to offer. And uh, obviously these people at the boards make decisions. Some of them are strange, uh, but let's give him time, see what he can do. Yeah, he's got not a bad squad that he's inherited there. Yeah, he certainly has, you know, and obviously if they all want to play for each other, then they certainly have got a lot of experience there and they, you expect to be further up the league than what they are now. Yeah, and again, the remit here, everybody seems to be looking for this um, football in its more, in the purest sense. I mean, we're obsessed at times with mm -hmm. the way Barcelona used to play football. Uh, I think if anything in Scotland, what we've witnessed over the last week is there are many ways uh, to win a game, uh, Ruffy, and some managers have a certain style. Yeah, I think supporters want to be entertained. They want to see individuals who who give you something in a game. You know, obviously last night we saw Celtic and it was a full-back that was running the show. 
the, the night before it was two wingers that were, were exciting the fans and I think the fans pay enough money to go to games that they want to be excited they obviously yeah they want to see goals they want to see their team being successful but I think the anticipation of getting up to go to a game is what players are on the park yeah, um, and we started with Rangers, so we might as well finish with them, uh, Ruffy. Um, does the manager need to come in and promise a certain style of football, or is it just first and foremost winning football? I think they, they need to get back to where Rangers expect themselves to be, and, and that's up challenging Celtic. I think they're a long way off of that now, but the new manager coming in, that will be his remit to do that. But the first thing he'll want to say is, I need some money to make this team better. And that is the big key on this. Do yeah. you think the next manager will have a substantial kitty? Well, well, we've saw that there are very very wealthy people prepared to put millions into the club, you know, to stabilise them or, or, or do whatever. I, I think these people who are putting the money in will want to see uh, Rangers challenging again. And uh, if enough of them get together, I mean, Rangers are a massive club with a lot of people who want to see them being successful, but they'll really have to put their hands in their pockets yet again. OK, uh, Graham Murty is in charge for the moment. We'll look ahead to the weekend's football on tomorrow night's programme. We'll probably uh, delve in even more into some of the stories that will undoubtedly emerge from a day of drama at Ibrox when eventually the board decided enough was enough and they sacked Pedro Cachina. Now the search is on for someone to take Rangers forward. Thanks for watching.